So good morning, everybody, and I would like to thank again Manos and Manos for for this invitation and uh, congratulate them for the great uh, for the great congress. So when I was a resident, uh, we we have studied the massive rotator cuff tears and we found 52 retear rates. And also when I have made my fellowship in Grenoble, Johan Barth also showed me in his previous studies that he has also also 42 percent of free tears in massive rotator cuff. So our, uh, how could, could you prove the, the history of massive rotator cuff tears was our question when, when I was, I was started in 2015 in Grenoble. So we, we have started the first generation improvement with a speed bridge technique, transosseous equivalent technique, and also we have added uh, bi uh, biodegradable uh, parts for, uh, for biological augmentation of the rotator cuff. However, we improved mechanically and biologically, but uh, what is going on with the retraction? And uh, systematic review shows us that uh, when you use an ideal position graft, it's better than an augmentation graft. And we all know from Professor Mihata his, his brilliant idea regarding the superior capsular reconstruction, the, both the clinical and the biomechanical studies. However, in France, we do not have a dermal allograft. And uh, due to the journey of, of Johan Barth in Korea, uh, we have started to use the biceps autograph as a graft for a superior capsular reconstruction. We have published this as, an, uh, as a technique. And this is the original technique. So this is a massive poster superior rotator cuff tear. And you see, okay. and you see the proximal migration of the humeral head. And uh, you use a triple loaded uh, suture ankle in the middle of the in the middle of the greater tuberosity. You perform three lasso loops uh, onto the the biceps tendon. This is the final image, and then you you perform a distal biceps tenotomy, and then you suture your uh, uh, your your graft in uh, 30 degrees of forward flexion and 30 degrees of uh, of abduction. And this is the effect of superior capsular reconstruction. And then you can do uh, a repair of, of the posterior calf, of the infraspinatus, also a side-to-side -side, uh, repair onto the, the bicep tendon. And also you can use the, uh, the bicep tendon as a <coughs> position graft and perform a medialized repair of the supraspinatus onto the bicep tendon autograft. So this is the final image from posteriorly, from anteriorly, and also in transgicularly. So our study was that uh, we, we, used, <coughs> you, we uh, used all the patients that he had performed, Johan, during the period uh, of, uh, during the period before 2010 with the classic double row technique with a transosseous equivalent technique that was prospective, uh, uh, augmented with a, with a pass, with a biofiber, and also the, the transosseous technique and the superior capsular reconstruction with the biceps. And also we, we, we checked also for re <coughs> rates at three, six, and 12 months postoperatively. So the inclusion criteria was massive rotator cuff tears. However, uh, without Hamada uh, uh, greater than two and fat infiltration of the infraspinatus, it had to be lower than grade three. And we had 28 patients with a classic double row technique, 30 patients with a biofiber, and 24 patients with a superior capsular reconstruction with the biceps. And if we compare the three groups, they were similar uh, regarding the age the, and the functional preoperative scores. Uh, however, then we had more retracted tendons with the biofiber group and the superior capsular reconstruction group, and this was statistically significant. Also, the fat infiltration, there was no uh, statistical significant differences in the fat infiltration uh, comparing the three groups. So two years post-operatively, using, uh, using also the, uh, the functional outcomes and also the ultrasound, we didn't find any statistically significant differences regarding the functional outcomes. However, the strength was significantly statistically better in the, in the superior capsular reconstruction groups using, using the biceps. And also the structural outcome showed us that we only had two cases with a, with a re-tier of, of the graft uh, of the superior capsular reconstruction, but with the other groups we, all, we had almost 40% of uh, structural failures. So we went back to, to, to our initial results with, a, with the augmentation of the speed bridge and with the biofiber. 
So the, the, most, the most important thing that we have found that was the infraspinatus, we had zero failures. All the infraspinatus were, were, were intact during our latest follow-up. So we have the muscle for couples that, was, that were intact, and this could explain that the better strength and also probably the better strength in cases that we have retorn biceps tendon autograft. So the superior capsular reconstruction with the biceps is faster, better, and cheaper, and probably this is why. <coughs> I went back to the lab when I made my, my, my PhD. I found that in massive rotator cuff tears in rats, the muscle loses about 40% of the muscle force. However, I went back to the lab, and I also retensioned the, the muscle in the middle half distance, so I found when I retensioned to the half distance and not under the greater tuberosity, I have graded force. So with the, with the biceps tendon, it's easy to do a medialization of your repair of the, of the supraspinatus onto the biceps tendon autograft. Also, when I searched the literature, I found divergent results regarding the structural failures of the superior capsular reconstruction using different, different grafts. And also, one of my, my thoughts was probably the weak point is also the glenoid. So we, we measured with my resident the bone density at the glenoid side, and we found that in 20 cases with massive rotator cuff tears and in 10 cases with the control CTs with hands with unit measurements, that probably in massive rotator cuff tears you lose approximately 50% of your bone density, and this was statistically significant. Also, the when you do a superior capsular reconstruction, probably you have to preserve the labrum because biomechanical studies shows that the labrum is a superior glenoid labrum is an important contributor to the superior glenoid humeral constraint. And finally, a, a, a biomechanical study show that probably the biceps tendon is, is better biomechanically than the fascia lata. So take home message, the ACR with the biceps is a safe and, and really reproducible. Probably acts as an interposition graft also Remain muscle must be retentioned also. The labrum is important. Biomechanically, it, it, it's probably equivalent or better than the fascia lata. However, be careful also with the bone density at, the, at the both uh, glenoid and the both humeral side, but still more evidence and more follow-up. I would like to thank Johan Barr for this idea that he, he learned to me. He, I'm continuing to, to do this, this, this technique and follow the patients. And the superior capsular reconstruction, we, we, we believe that prevents infraspinatus retear in massive posterior superior rotator cuff retracted tears. This is just accepted in American Journal of Sports Medicine yesterday. Thank you for your attention. Thank you.